Hello, everyone, I'm shutting. Welcome to our work. Semantic promoted debiasing and background disambiguation for zero shot instance segmentation. This is a joint work by Zhejiang University and Nanyang Technological University. First, I introduce what is zero shot segmentation. Zero shot segmentation aims to segment not only seen classes that have been seen in training set but also unseen classes with additional semantic information. As shown in the figure, seen classes contain person, baseball bat, fence and so on that have appearing in the training set but unseen classes frisbee not appearing in the training set, but we need to segment it. As shown in the last row of figure, conventional methods can segment seen classes only, but with zero shot methods, we can segment both seen and unseen classes. We focus on two major challenges in zero shot instance segmentation, bias issue and background ambiguation. Since the model is trained on the data of scene categories, it tends to classify all objects into scene categories. Novel object like dog is labeled as scene class like horse in the figure. The background ambiguation issue is specific for zero shot instance segmentation. In the training of instance segmentation, objects that do not belong to any training categories are considered background, for example, parking meter and hydrant in the figure. The model hence is likely to identify the novel objects as background, which affects the final performance a lot. To solve the above challenge, we propose our approach D20. First, we propose an unseen constrained visual feature learning strategy to leverage semantic knowledge of unseen categories, mitigating bias issue. Second, we design an input conditional classifier that projects semantic embedding to image-specific visual prototypes to address both bias and cross-modal domain gap issue. Finally, we introduce an image-adaptive background representation to rescue novel objects from background. The object belongs to an unknown class, which has no samples or labels in the training set. Therefore, it did not receive any supervision during the training process. What we need to do here is to add supervision for the unknown class during the training process. This means that for the seen classes, we not only require them to be classified into known classes but also have a certain probability of being classified as unknown. The assigned label category is determined based on the relationship with the unknown class, following the formula below. First, we calculate the similarity between the known and unknown classes. If we simply use the top one similarity as the label, it won't increase robustness and may incur higher error costs. Therefore, we introduce gumbel noise. After adding gumbel noise, the labels we obtain are almost always different each time, but they are determined based on the similarity. The higher the similarity, the greater the weight of the label. For example, in the visualization on the right, for the visible class, horse, the most likely categories it will be classified into are dog, followed by sheep and then, elephant. This is consistent with our understanding as horses are most similar to these classes. This introduces the constraint of unknown classes into the known classes. In the testing scenario, objects will not only be classified into known classes but also into unknown classes, thereby increasing the response to unknown categories. Next, we propose an input conditional classifier. Language and vision are two modalities of information but they need to be matched in a shared space where visual and textual representations align. To achieve this, we utilize a transformer to map textual information to the visual space. Specifically, we treat the language text as the query and the visual samples as the keys and values. By dynamically adapting to the input images, this approach significantly enhances its generalization capability. To further validate the superiority of our method, we visualize TSNI of image and text embeddings distribution. The results show that with D20, image embeddings are well aligned with text embeddings and interdistance are compact within the class and loose between classes which show that the cross-modal gap is alleviated and discriminative features are obtained. Lastly, we have the image adaptive background module. The network tends to classify unknown categories as background because objects that do not elicit a response during training are often assigned to the background class. To address this discrepancy, we treat all background patches in the current image as background vector representations during both training and testing. 
This approach helps prevent misclassification. The challenge lies in whether the network can accurately identify all background patches and effectively segment objects. Through visualization, we discovered that even for unknown categories, the network can still perform segmentation, ensuring unambiguous background vectors. Our D20 achieved the state-of-the-art performance on both generalized zero-shot instance segmentation and zero-shot instance segmentation. With the significant improvement of 13 per percent over the previous methods. For qualitative visualizations, D20 shows much better results than baseline methods. D20 can successfully segment sofa, snowboard and so on. Thank you for your listening. If you are interested in our work, you can visit our project page for more detail information and come to our poster.